Today on First Cup, and answer some questions about nutrition and hook kicks. If you could time to stick around, we roll in 20. Now I'm going to get coffee ready. Coffee time. In three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Tuesday. It is November 16th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Good morning, Jenny. Well, how was your Monday? A good start back from the weekend, assuming you have a weekend. Maybe you don't have a weekend. Maybe your weekend is like today and Friday, and it's not even connected. I don't know. Good morning, Tommy. I remember when I used to work retail, that was the case. I would have Wednesdays and Saturdays off. Those were the two big days. I was re- I told him it was really important that I had Saturdays off. Um, here's the thing you don't know about me, because I never talk about this. Um, I was raised Jewish, pretty open about that. There are a handful of things that I really try to do that come traditionally from my faith. Um, one of them is I really try not to work, do like work for money, work on Saturdays on the Sabbath. And so I generally wouldn't work on Saturdays and usually I would have Wednesdays off because I taught karate Monday, Wednesday, this was right out of college. And so Monday they would make sure I'd get out, you know, I'd have the early shift and I'd get out in time. Often, just actually, I think every time on Monday, I would just drive right to the dojo. Huh. I haven't thought about that in a while. Good morning, Dennis and Mindy and Daniel. Look at all my friends coming in. Well, yesterday was a weird, crazy, cool day. Uh, after first cup, did did some stuff around the house. Uh, Justin of Marshall Journal. And his girlfriend were asleep in the bed. When did they get up? Eight. Because they're young. Uh, when did we go to bed? Everybody went to bed at like 10. A little after 10. They got up at 8. And so got them out of the house. Dropped them off in Burlington. I said, oh yeah, bring hats and gloves. Because it's going to get cold today. And uh, it got really cold overnight. <laughs> you see the snow? Um, yeah, let's see if I can fix my camera. There we go. So dropped them off and they wandered around Burlington for the day. And I went to the co-working space and had a bunch of meetings and did some work. And then we ended up to the airport. And then I went to the range and I went to the gym. And then I came home and went to bed. I ate and then I went to bed. It's a good day. It's a very good morning, Stacy. Ah, well, in between their client meetings, bunch of bunch of good stuff, bunch of good stuff yesterday, tons of ideas. Typically, Justin and I have a meeting every Tuesday morning, and I said, you know what, we're, we're here, let's have it in the car. So we had our meeting in the car while we drove north and just had a bunch of items. So he, he's got a ton of stuff. He's got to message me because he was the note taker. But most of what we were talking about, how do we get more people to write for Marshall Journal? And where are we at with issue two of the print edition? So print edition is on track. And for those of you watching, I I think most of you here should probably be writing for Marshall Journal, but that's up to you. Stacy says, y'all blew up my phone. The number of tags and comments on tags from photos from this weekend was insane. And Stacy with the 150, 60 photos that she's uploaded. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of those photos were absolutely amazing, Stacy. Mm. Oh, let's switch that banner up. Bam. Oh, come on, this one. There we go. No, I, I just want this one. I don't want this one anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I had... I mentioned I went to the range. 
I, I had some interesting experiences at the range. The teacher that I've been working with, he's been law enforcement and instructs law enforcement in shooting, it sounds like, for quite a long time. If you've taught martial arts for a while, or you, honestly, you've taught anything, you know that not everyone's a good teacher. Just having knowledge doesn't make you a good teacher. And so I'm pretty appreciative that this guy not only has knowledge, but is a good teacher. And I could tell right away he was a good teacher. We, we This is probably going to be a monthly thing where I go back and then in between I practice what I can. But we were looking at some of what was going on. I'm a fairly new shooter. I'm not shooting great. How do we adjust? And I feel like I get so much out of this because I'm not just learning this skill. I'm learning a whole different way of teaching something with all kinds of things I can pull back in. He's given me drills where, you know, I didn't know how many rounds were in the magazine. Uh, He's got me moving things, moving my hands around. He's got me looking in different spots. It was really cool. And he knows that I do martial arts and that I teach martial arts. He's got enough of an understanding of what martial arts instruction is that he's doing his best anyway to relate things back from what we're doing to what I already know. And so just it's it's a ton of fun. It's scary. There was somebody shooting... uh, something very very loud it was i don't even remember what it was but it was very loud and that was going off while i'm trying to focus and do my thing i was the only other person in the range and that was that was unnerving lots of lots of parallels with martial arts right yeah you you ever been sparring with someone and another group bumps into you what do most people do most people stop and they're what's going on Takes a long time, but eventually you just kind of move away from them, or maybe you push them away and you maintain eye contact. Eye contact. There we go. There's a word with the person you're working with. Daniel says, I'm sure I've asked before, can I get the printed copy of Marshall Journal? We can make that happen. Uh, send me a message. So Stacy's saying, yeah, you need to sign up online. The challenge there is Daniel's International and the cost of shipping. It We can ship Marshall Journal with a single stamp domestically. Can't do that internationally. When we ship that, uh, we did have somebody globally that wanted the first copy. It cost us $20. I'm sure there's a cheaper way we can do it. We can figure it out. Daniel. Stacy says, my shooting instructor made me stop thinking of the gun as a gun, but rather a camera to get better accuracy. I love that. And that takes you spending some time with the instructor and them getting to know you. And I think that's a perfect example of where a good instructor, no matter the subject, is willing to bend and flex and find different ways to cue, to relate to the student. One of my favorite things that I've done, good morning, Eric. One of the things that I've I've worked with uh, students on in the past, especially kids, specifically kids, is getting themselves to see themselves as like a superhero. If you're trying to bring out intensity in a child, how do you teach that? How do you teach a, a kid to do forms with, you know, a dramatic presentation and a strong face. You can you can show them, but most kids don't have the ability to copy that. They don't get it. Okay, well, what? who's your favorite superhero? How would they do this? How would they do this if they were fighting whatever that superhero fights? And I've had some luck with that. You got to know your audience. Yeah, please do, Daniel. Stacy says, until that moment, I was afraid of the gun. Guns are scary. They make a lot of noise. There were in, there were situations yesterday where, as I'm trying to get better with my dexterity on the trigger, like there were some, some early pulls and some errant shots. I don't mean like in a dangerous way. It's an indoor range. It's pretty darn safe. 
But like anything else, you get better. You practice, you get better. It's a good thing. Well, today is a recording day. Today we have four episodes. Was it two weeks ago I did four episodes? This is going to be a this is going to be an intense day. We've got four episodes, including the next recording of how to fight. Andrew and I have made some decisions on how to fight. It is not going to be a regular feature in the podcast feed. It will happen when it seems appropriate to happen. And there are a couple checkboxes that we've decided we need to hit. It needs to be a movie everybody knows. It needs to be an actor in that movie that everybody knows. And it needs to be a guest who has enough of a following that we can all hit the ground running and share that episode. Why? Because those episodes take a lot more resources. Julius puts a lot of time in. And I don't want to do that unless there's a chance that it's going to go somewhere. Now, the How to Fight episodes we've done in the past have been our most watched episodes of recent. But it's not enough. I don't mean like we're getting thousands or millions of hits. I mean, we're getting hundreds. We need more than hundreds. Most of our attention still comes from podcast listeners, but those How to Fight episodes have a lot of video. So I got those going on, three conventional interview episodes today. Uh, Andrew and I are doing our debrief from the weekend tomorrow. And in between, I'm just filling in. Uh, first episode records at 9 until 9. I, I got a ton of client work I can do. I did not schedule my week well. Or I should say, this is a tough week. Yesterday was a, um, not a conventional day. I was on the road, not working from home. Plenty of work that is not as efficient for my laptop. Today, recording all day. Thursday, traveling for training. And then Friday, I won't be at the co-working space. So I'm looking at, at what's going on, going, hey, my. typically Friday comes around and I end off the day and I'm done with all my work and I feel really good. This is going to be tough to do that. I think I'm going to have to have some early and late nights. Nights. Knigets. Um, to, to stay stay up on what's going on. Dennis says that guy was a brilliant instructor. I agree. Turn the gun into a camera. Yeah. Well, I'm going to switch gears now because we've got some great comments over here on the Facebook group. Uh, one from Daniel, one from Josh. And so I'm going to start with, with what Daniel asks. Have you ever seen the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead? And what is your opinion of the juice fast as a kickstart to changing an extremely obese person's relationship with food? Yes, I know you're a martial artist, not a nutritionist. I have not seen that documentary, but I know a number of people who have talked about it. I understand the concepts around juice fasts and why people do them, or juice cleanses. For those who don't know, the main... Uh, argument people make for going to juice is it pulls the fiber out, it makes digestion easier, you can absorb nutrient better, etc. But you got to be careful about what you're juicing. Yeah, you can juice anything, but let's say you just juiced apples. It's a lot of sugar. It's it's better than I don't know raw white sugar. Or, or processed white sugar, but it's still sugar. It's still fructose. Your body is still going to react to it as sugar. I think there is something to be said for juicing if it is going to get you to eat healthier things. I would rather you eat celery than celery juice. But if you're not going to eat celery, but you will drink celery juice, there you go. We underestimate the value of fiber and all these other micronutrients and phytonutrients and these things that, let's face it, there are things in food. We don't know what they are yet. Oh, but Jeremy, of course we do. We don't know how smell works. Okay. So if we don't know how smell works, there's all kinds of stuff going on that we don't fully understand in food. Science fully under admits that we don't understand much about metabolism and how that works. So if 
we don't know that, then I apply my cardinal rule. You can't outscience nature. Nature gives us food in whole form. But on the other half of that, you've got the habit stuff. And any of you who are in the 12 months to health group, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about habits. We're talking about building habits that create change. I have a juicer. I use it rarely because it's a pain in the butt to clean. And that, that's been my big challenge. But I've known people who, you know what? They start the day with a particular juice or they, they do a week of juice or whatever it is. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it's a bad thing. If you're trying to move from where you are to where you want to go, you have to find that first step that doesn't feel like a big step. What's that small increment? How do you move forward in a way that you're okay with? If juicing is convenient or, I don't know, you don't like chewing, then maybe you start there. There's no bad choice. There is, I tried it, it didn't work, but I kept doing it. There's ignoring the results. Or there's looking for results on a shorter timetable than exists. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Hello, Salminator. Stacy says, juicing would only kill my diabetes. Most likely. That's a really quick absorption of that sugar. But we'll admit to loving a good cold Granny Smith apple celery juice in the summer. Sounds tasty. 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 And Tom, Tommy's agreeing, being type 1 diabetic, I have to be extremely careful. Juice doesn't exist in nature. Juice only exists because we have electricity. Oh, I guess you could use a, a, a manual press to get juice out, but that's still relatively, relatively new. Food for thought here, Daniel says. Thank you. You are welcome. The, the last thing I will say is, is I want to underscore that. Find that first small sustainable step. It's everything, right? It, it's, it's what we do in martial arts. It's what we do everywhere. Martial arts is just show up. All you got to do is show up. If you show up long enough, things happen. But people get tunnel vision. They're like, I got to do this, and then, and then this, and then this, and, and, and I don't know that I could ever do that. It's like, that's five years down the road. Don't worry about it. Nobody's going to ask you to do that tomorrow. And so our next question comes in from Josh. And he asks a couple things. One of them, he must have missed the memo about faith, about the book Faith. Because uh, he works in here. You posted a while back you were working on a fiction book. How is it going? Is it available anywhere Yes, it's available on Amazon uh, called Faith. There you go. Grab it. Uh, there is an audio version as well on Audible, if anybody's interested. I would love to get some more copies of that sold so we can justify. Oh, it's still snowing. That's cool. So we can justify the resources in the book, too. Because that was what that, that was a lot of time. I was putting it in like an hour a day. That was about a year ago. When did we release that? Just after Christmas? Something like that. But his main question here, uh, and there's a bunch of material, and so I'm going to read this whole thing and then come back. A kicking question I was pondering recently while practicing. In Taekwondo, people sometimes will do an axe kick from a bent leg chamber, like starting a front kick if facing someone with shoulders square or from a side kick position if standing bladed. And then he says, maybe not just Taekwondo. Christine Banner Rodriguez used to do it that way too, if I recall. Anyway, from this position, sometimes it gets done in a kind of an intermediate between an axe and a hook kick, where the kicking trajectory is slanted at a 45 degree angle. So you're less likely to get your leg tangled up in the shoulder or in the crook of an arm. It sort of looks like a sloppy version of both, to be honest, though I like it in many cases better. Have you ever heard of a name for that way of doing it? No, to me, that's still a hook kick because 
the action of an axe kick is chopping and the action of a hook kick is that pull in piece and you could throw an axe kick and pull that heel back to me that's still a hook kick the moment the primary action that generates force is the retraction of that heel that's a hook kick in my book now i'm sure somebody's got a a, a better name a different name for it i don't know that it matters but i understand what you're saying and i i like that kick and i've thrown that kick i don't find it to be as practical because of my answers to this next part speaking of which i am curious if folks ever teach hook kicks to parts of the body other than the head legs for example i think the way i was taught both the axe and hook headshots made them sort of impractical from a beginner standpoint if you didn't have the flexibility to pull them off or the ability to set up the kick to put the opponent's body in a position where even if you kick the head it will move out of the way in a way to allow you to extract your leg and not end up losing balance yep all right so a bunch of stuff to unpack in there first off let's let's go with the the axe versus hook to the head part because that's an easy part there are things that are cool in, co in competition that have fairly high risk that I think are not worthwhile in a self-defense situation. And those are two of them. There are plenty of ways you can throw an ax kick that are of value. And every one of them involves someone with too long of a stance, which is probably not going to happen on the street. Ax kicks are fun. But the chance of you getting your leg caught up on somebody's shoulder, pretty high. Too high to make it worthwhile. You've also got to get pretty close. Same kind of thing with a hook kick. But if you have the flexibility, you are less likely. You have far more control over whether or not that leg's going to get bound up. I think hook kicks make a lot of sense to the leg and even the body. Now, quite often... People would teach hook kick. Let's pretend my, my hand here is a foot and my fingers are toes, right? Quite often, people will exclusively teach that hook kick with the bottom of the foot because you get more distance out of it. This is how we, we throw hook kicks in super foot. It's all about extending that leg and extending that, that foot because you get a couple more inches of reach. But let's say you want to kick somebody in the leg. Sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want to kick let's say behind the knee and you want to drive with the heel because you can apply more force and you get slightly better angle on the retraction of that knee and maybe pull that leg out from under them you could also do a hook kick with the heel into someone's back is it a great target no not at all but it kind of works if you look at both an axe kick and a hook kick or this kind of hybrid 45 hook kick sort of thing to me all three of those the heel makes more sense as a self as a target to be used in a self-defense situation because you can put a lot of force in there if i have the space i can throw a hook kick at the back of your leg and give you decent charlie horse probably gonna hurt probably not gonna completely change the flow of a, of a self-defense situation but if that's what i got i'll take it it's not a lot of point of doing that with the bottom of the foot unless i think i've got the right angle to sweep your leg out from under you right to, to knock your balance off well people are, are talking about the book uh, Stacy says, it's a great read. Daniel says, I enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next post. Dennis says, Faith was amazing. Finished the audiobook in one sitting. Wow. And Daniel's chiming in. I've used hook kicks to the body and point sparring to decent effect. They aren't really taught except as headshots at the Taekwondo school I attended. So nobody expects them. There you go. So let's dive back into the rest of the question. I go 
No, those were the high points of the question, weren't they? I don't go to the head with these techniques. I will in point sparring. I'm never going to teach. I'm, if, if you said, Jeremy, we want you to develop a self-defense curriculum. Okay. Neither kick's going in it. There's no, there's the, the time in to train it versus the response, the result, the impact, the usefulness, not worth it. They're fun. That's it. There's value in competition. That's it. But Jeremy, if I hit you in the head with an axe, yeah, the key word is if. What if you miss? What if I come in? Most of us have had our leg, if we throw axe kicks, most of us have had a situation at some point where our leg gets caught up on somebody's shoulder in the middle of a sparring match. And you're both like, oh. Well, the dynamic of this exchange just changed dramatically because what do you have to do if you're the person that axe kicks catches what do you do and they're on the ground and if you're not strong enough to do that you just kind of grab it and you step forward and now they're on the ground but they might punch you in the face yeah it's not going to hurt that much they, they don't have a good relationship to the ground their their stability is off they're going to fall down a punch while you're falling backwards is not terribly effective Good question. Good question, Josh. I'm thinking about this now. So here's my challenge to you today. We all know how to throw a hook kick. If you don't, it's the same as a hook punch, just with a foot. Right? Except the way the it's designed, it's kind of more of a ch -ch. But anyway, if you get the chance, pick a door frame and play with the angles on how you would throw that kick low. The biggest difference is when we throw hook kicks high, we're generally pulling the force, we're, we're generating power from the hip action. If you're throwing low, you're not moving the hip as much. It's all retraction that generates the force. So I'm not saying you play with it at full tilt, you probably hurt your heel, especially if you're kicking a door frame. But play with those angles. See what that feels like. Does it feel like you could pull through somebody's leg? If they're stepping down, if they don't have all their weight on their foot, yeah, you definitely can. You can upset people quite a bit, both literally and emotionally, if you catch them before their foot's planted. You got to be careful with it, though. <laughs> and then restomp the groin. Daniel says, absolutely. Always restomp the grind, as Master Ken would say. All right. It's time. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go prep for mine, go have a marathon recording session, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. I'm going to leave a spot for you to comment for tomorrow. If you have comments, of course, you can leave them on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash first cup of Jeremy. If you want to support us, we've got the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And of course, you can always use the code firstcup15, firstcup15 to get 15% off at whistlekick.com. New website, new website look, slowly dialing stuff in, making some things better, updated the graphics to the newest version uh, for the training programs. So, And the names, they weren't even named right. Still have the old names there. It's always something to do. So have a great day, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Take care. Peace.